Hey there, movie buffs and nostalgia seekers. DYZY equals A do you remember those good old days when you out huddle up with friends and family, maybe munching on some buttery popcorn, and delve into the mesmerizing world of cinema? Well, today, I'm here to take you on a trip down memory lane, back to 1968 when Peter Bogdanovich's targets hit the silver screen. DUI half I, oh, the thrill of watching it unfold, the suspense that kept you at the edge of your seat, and the unforgettable characters that lingered in your mind long after the credits rolled. Do you recall the vivid scenes, the haunting atmosphere, or perhaps the brilliant performances that made this movie stand out in your memory? Whether it was Boris Karloff's iconic role, the suspenseful storytelling, or the way it tackled societal fears of its time. Targets had a unique charm that left an indelible mark on cinema history. So, go on, share your cherished memories, and let's reminisce about those moments that made us fall in love with the magic of the silver screen. Now, let's dive into some random facts about this cinematic gem. In the 1968 movie Targets, directed by Peter Bogdanovich, there's an interesting connection to another film from years prior. Roger Corman, the producer of The Terror, suggested that a little-known actor from that film, Jack Nicholson, should also appear in Targets, possibly in the role of the killer. However, Bogdanovich declined this idea. It's worth noting that Jack Nicholson went on to become a world-famous actor shortly after Targets was released. Interestingly, Targets holds a special place for Sarah Karloff, the daughter of the legendary Boris Karloff. According to her, it's her favorite film in which her father appeared. In the movie, Peter Bogdanovich's character, Sammy, strives to convince Boris Karloff's semi-autobiographical character to take on a role in a good movie, referring to Targets. This movie stands out as a departure from the B-horror pictures that Karloff had been associated with, particularly the three lackluster films he had made with Roger Corman, including The Terror. The irony lies in Bogdanovich's attempt to persuade Karloff to act in the very movie the audience is watching the one last quality picture that's not a B-horror production. It's also ironic that Karloff's character becomes a secondary storyline in the film, as the real focus is on the spree killer. Targets remains a compelling piece of cinema, not just for its unique storyline, but for these intriguing connections and ironies within the film. In the 1968 movie Targets, director Peter Bogdanovich created a striking visual contrast within the film. The house where Tim O'Kelly's character, a clean-cut young man, lives with his seemingly happy family, is portrayed with a surreal twist. The walls in each room are painted with cartoonish colors, and many interior doors curiously lack doorknobs. This deliberate choice gives the house a peculiar and claustrophobic appearance, reflecting the warped fairy tale nature of the deranged young shooter's life. In another cinematic nod, the name Orlock might ring a bell for fans of classic horror films. F.W. Murnau's 1922 German expressionist horror film Nosferatu featured a character named Count Orlock, who was essentially a thinly veiled version of Count Dracula from Bram Stoker's gothic horror novel. Murnau didn't secure the rights to adapt Stoker's book leading to a legal battle with Stoker's widow, who sued despite the name change. Interestingly, when Roger Corman enlisted Peter Bogdanovich to direct Targets, he inquired about Bogdanovich's familiarity with the directorial styles of Alfred Hitchcock and Howard Hawks. Corman, known for his savvy filmmaking, recommended that Bogdanovich shoot in a concise and organized manner, much like Hitchcock. Hitchcock was known for his precise and efficient approach, while Hawks often employed a more kinetic and partially improvised shooting style. In summary, Target stands out not only for its riveting story, but also for the visual and artistic choices made by director Peter Bogdanovich. The house's surreal appearance and the reference to Orlock in the film add layers of intrigue to this classic 1968 movie. Additionally, the advice from Roger Corman about directorial styles provides insight into the collaborative process behind the scenes. In the 1968 movie Targets, a unique challenge arose when filming a scene involving a television. Film cameras typically run at 24 frames per second, while U.S. television screens operate at 30 frames per second. This incongruity causes a dark or light bar to roll across the image when filming directly off a TV screen. To circumvent this issue, the filmmakers used a matte technique, 
overlaying a film picture onto the TV screen in most shots. This method ensured a steady picture with no rolling bar effect. However, due to budget constraints, they couldn't employ this technique for the establishing shot of the scene resulting in the appearance of the rolling bar in that particular shot. Peter Bogdanovich, the director of Targets, paid homage to Samuel Fuller by naming his character Sammy Michaels. Fuller had contributed to the script, and this naming gesture was a sign of gratitude. Interestingly, the character of Byron Orlock in the film is based on Boris Karloff, a renowned British actor famous for his horror film roles. Despite their similarities as respected British actors in the horror genre, there were notable differences between the character and the real-life actor. While Orlock is portrayed as embittered in wanting to retire, Boris Karloff never retired and was proud of his legacy, especially his iconic role as Frankenstein's monster. This intriguing behind-the-scenes information sheds light on the meticulous details and tributes woven into the making of Targets, making it a film of both artistic and historical significance in the world of cinema. In 1968, the movie Targets made its way to the screens. It was shot in a brisk 25 days, finishing up production in December 1967, although its copyright bears the date 1967. Paramount Pictures held off its release due to its controversial content. To mitigate concerns about gun violence, they added a written prologue before the film. One interesting aspect of the film was the involvement of Boris Karloff. Originally, Peter Bogdanovich planned for Karloff to appear in the movie for about 20 minutes, with two days of filming. Additionally, they intended to use stock footage from the terror to add another 20 minutes of screen time for Karloff. However, in the final cut of the movie, Karloff graced the screen for around 30 minutes, excluding scenes from the terror, and all of his scenes were shot in just five days. A standout moment during the film's production was Karloff's storytelling. He recounted the tale of the servant fleeing death, which came from W. Somerset Maugham's short story, The Appointment in Samara. Remarkably, Karloff delivered this story in a single take, earning a standing ovation from everyone on set. In sum, Targets is a 1968 film with a unique production history, featuring Boris Karloff in a role that exceeded initial expectations. Its controversial nature led to a delayed release with a prologue, and Karloff's storytelling prowess left a lasting impression on the set. A film with more to it than meets the eye, Targets remains a noteworthy piece of cinema from 1968. In the 1968 movie Targets, directed by Peter Bogdanovich, there's an interesting story about Boris Karloff's involvement. During a scene where Sammy wakes up with a hangover and sees Byron Orlock, originally, he was supposed to laugh at himself. However, Sammy couldn't manage it. It was Boris Karloff who suggested the bit used in the film, and he even ad-libbed Orlock's startled reaction when he unexpectedly confronts himself in a mirror. Another intriguing fact about the movie is that the sniping scene at the oil tank was shot without a sound technician. All the noises for that scene were added during post-production, showcasing the film's creative approach to sound design. Furthermore, it's worth noting that aside from diegetic music, like background music played on a car radio, there is no musical soundtrack for the movie. This choice adds to the film's unique and atmospheric quality, allowing the tension and suspense to build naturally. Targets is a remarkable film that not only tells a gripping story, but also offers insights into the creative decisions made behind the scenes, from Karloff's improvisation to the unconventional sound design and musical choices. As we bid adieu to the cinematic journey of Targets, it's like stepping out of a time machine, isn't it? This 1968 classic, a unique blend of suspense, horror, and a profound exploration of the human psyche, has left an indelible mark on our film-loving hearts. Now, as you prepare to close the curtain on this experience, take a moment to reflect. Perhaps you were captivated by Boris Karloff's chilling portrayal, a nod to his iconic past in horror cinema, or maybe you found yourself immersed in Peter Bogdanovich's dual role as both actor and director, a precursor to his illustrious career. Targets isn't just a film, it's a time capsule of emotions, fears, and artistic innovation. Now, it's your turn to share your thoughts. 
Did Targets ignite a newfound appreciation for vintage cinema? Did it transport you to the turbulent era of the late 1960s? Or did it simply keep you at the edge of your seat, pondering the enigmatic nature of human darkness? Your memories and insights are invaluable, adding layers to the tapestry of cinematic history. Thank you for joining us on this cinematic voyage through Targets. Your presence and perspective have made it all the more special. We eagerly await your reflections, your cherished moments, and your unique connection with this timeless masterpiece. Share your thoughts, and let's keep the conversation alive. Until next time, may your love for film continue to flourish, and may you always find inspiration in the art of storytelling. Warm regards.